Hey everybody, this is Spoonie, and today I want to share with you something I searched for and had some trouble finding, which is automatically opening doors for my Rust base. I wanted doors that would automatically open whenever I came into the base, but then automatically close whenever I left it. If you're anything like me, you've definitely been guilty of leaving doors open while you run out to find a couple of nodes, and if you're actually me, you've been raided while out, basically giving your entire base away to somebody who only had to blow up one or two walls. Anyway, today we are learning from our mistakes, and I'm going to show you how I set up some doors that would only open for me when I entered or anybody else who's authorized for the tool cupboard and automatically close for me whenever I leave the base, but would also automatically close if anybody else approaches the base. Lastly, I also wanted to include the ability to shut the entire system down in the event of a raid. All right, so let's get started. What you're gonna need for this is four branches, two heartbeat sensors, one blocker, one splitter, one switch, one memory cell, and one X or switch. You're also gonna need a door controller for each of the doors that you want to open and close. A quick tip for placing these is make sure you put them on the inside of the door that you want to control and not the outside like I have them here. I've placed them on the outside just to make it easier to see what's going on, but if you put them on the outside like this and somebody manages to take over your tool cupboard, then they can simply just rewire all of the doors and open them without having to get through them. To connect a door controller, all you have to do is place a door controller near the door you want it to connect to, make sure that door is unlocked and closed, and then press the use key on the door controller. The bottom green light should light up regardless of whether or not the door controller has power, and you'll know it's connected. All right, so let's get started wiring this up. This is pretty straightforward and I'll color code any of the wires that overlap so it's easy to see exactly what's going on and keep this from becoming a bowl of spaghetti. You can arrange your components any way you'd like and you can make this much more compact if you're not worried about how pretty it looks, which might be useful in keeping intruders from knowing what this is or how it's working. As you can see, we've connected our main power to the first splitter. This setup uses 15 power plus the number of door controllers you have. So to begin, I'll just add one and we can increase it later as we have more doors to connect. This should be the only number you ever have to change unless you're adding more entrances and exits later on. Next, we're gonna branch power off, which is the top left connection to our second branch component. Our second branch off will connect to the bottom of the switch and we will then send the rest of the power using the top right connection to the bottom of our third branch component. We'll set the second branch off to a value of nine and we'll set the third to a value of three. Connect the third branch off to the bottom of the blocker, which is the blue one, and the rest of the power from the third branch will go into the bottom of our memory cell, which is the green. So far, this is what your setup should look like. Next, connect the top of the blocker to the X or switch. Either bottom connection will work. The top right of our fourth and final branch component will also connect to the bottom of the X or switch. To finish our main setup, we're gonna connect our fourth branch off to the splitter. We're then gonna set the value of that fourth branch to five. Finally, we'll connect the top of our switch to the bottom of our fourth and final branch, and that's it for the main setup. We're ready to start on the heartbeat sensors at the entrance and exit, but first, I'll demonstrate the wiring on those here to make it simpler. I'll start by using a green wire in order to demonstrate the entrance. We'll connect one of the splitters to the input on the heartbeat sensor. We'll then connect the output to the topmost connection on the right side of the memory cell, called set. Next, we'll switch to a red wire, and again, connecting one of our splitter's outputs, we're going to connect to the input on our exit's heartbeat sensor. We're then going to connect the output on that heartbeat sensor to the left side of our blocker. And we're almost there, only two more connections to go. I know this seems complicated, but once you've done it a couple of times, you'll be able to do this no problem. So I'm gonna to switch to an orange wire and connect the top of our X or switch over to the reset connection on the middle right side of the memory cell. And finally, I'm gonna to switch to a yellow wire and connect the top right connection on the memory cell over to our door controllers. Those door controllers have an input and a pass-through. Just connect each pass-through to the next door controller. And finally, we need to set the authorizations on our heartbeat sensors. To do this, just look at them and press the use key. For the entrance, you wanna make sure that you've only selected authorized players. This refers to the players that are authorized on the tool cupboard. For the exit, you wanna make sure that you've selected both authorized and unauthorized. This is the most important step, so make sure you double check that it's only authorized for the entrance and both authorized and unauthorized for the exit. 
Now to properly test this, I'm going to have to move my heartbeat sensors to the entrance and exit of my makeshift base. The wiring is exactly the same, they're just in a different place. And we definitely want to double check again that our exit is set to both authorized and unauthorized and that our entrance is set to authorized players only. Now that everything is set up, we can go ahead and turn our system on and check that it's working. Now that the system is turned on, the entrance heartbeat sensor, since it can see me, is opening the doors. The entrance heartbeat sensor only needs to see you once and it will remember that you are in the base. And that means that these doors are going to remain open until you either close them manually, shut off your system, or leave your base. They'll also automatically close if anyone approaches your base, but it's still a good idea to remember if you're going to log out to turn this off. You also may have noticed that both of my doors did not open, only one did. That's because we set our power system to only include the one door controller. To change this or add additional doors later, you'll need to remember that your system requires 15 power plus the number of door controllers that you have. In this case, because I want two, I'm going to change it from 16 to 17 and set my new value. You can do this to increase or decrease the number of doors that you have controlled by the system and to make sure you're not wasting any extra power. We can now test that when we turn the system off, the doors close, and when we turn it back on, the doors do open. But we also need to test that the system won't work if somebody else uses the switch. So I'm going to block view of the heartbeat sensor from myself, turn the system off, and then turn it back on to see what happens. Because the heartbeat sensor can no longer see me, when the system is turned back on, the doors do not open. Once I've walked back within view of the heartbeat sensor, it begins functioning again, so we know everything is working as intended. And for the final test, we're simply just going to walk outside to make sure the doors close, and then walk back inside to make sure that they open when we come in. And that's it, the system is set up and you'll never accidentally leave your doors open again. If you'd like to see more tutorials on different things you could create or have a suggestion for something you'd like to see, leave it down in the comments, let me know, and don't forget to like and subscribe.